Good morning, brothers and sisters of the family Nath. I want to thank Suzanne for asking us to read this portion of scripture and share it with you and our thoughts. You know, who would have thought two months ago we'd be locked down? We'd be having church in our homes, praise and worship in our homes. You would never predict it, would you? But this is not a surprise to God. God knows this stuff in advance. See, the early church started out in the beginning in homes. And they had praise and worship services in their homes. But Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 tells us, That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. See, there's nothing new under the sun to God. This has happened before. It's going to happen again. History repeats itself. And I operate, when I read the Bible, as types and shadows, parallels, and patterns. And it's amazing how history keeps on repeating itself. One of my favorite verses to understand is Isaiah 46.10, which Gary and I both like. Declaring the end from the beginning, he knew that we would come full circle. You got to know the ending you have to read the beginning. It's one book. Not so much broke down in books and chapters because it's God's anointed inspired word. And if you want to understand the new, you have to know the old. See, the old covenant is the new covenant concealed. And the new testament is the old covenant revealed. Think about that. That's why how we find Bible patterns. And let me share a couple of these with you before we get started in our scriptures. The early church started in homes behind closed doors. And the word became flesh. They took a man named Jesus and crucified him. And they put him in a dark room, a tomb, and they closed the door. But see, that light began to flicker. That light began to shine. And the earth began to shake. Prison doors were open. Captives were set free. We have victory over death, hell, and the grave. The lame could walk. The blind could see. The deaf could hear. And we had access back to Abba the Father once again. No more did we have to go through a ritual or a priesthood. That's, he, Jesus wasn't locked down, but it couldn't keep him down. There's no grave going to hold that body down. And, and as I was looking at 50 days after he went back to the Father, 120 were in the upper room. They were in lockdown, just like us. They were in quarantine, and they had a 10-day prayer meeting. We struggled with 10 minutes. 10-day prayer meeting. God says, go, Jesus says, go there and pray for this was that. This was that? I bet that confused Peter. But then he started praying. Then he realized what he was talking about. This was that that the prophet Joel was talking about. In these last days, he's going to pour spirit upon all flesh. Our sons and daughters will prophesy. That's why we're so successful at our church, because we cater to the youth. We're making a place for them, for the future generation. Old men have seen dreams and, and visions. And the lame will walk. The blind will see. The deaf will hear. That's how the early church was born. That's how it was birthed. And we're having a recycle of that. Get ready, family nads, for a rebirth. Get ready for miracles happen. And the Holy Spirit working through us. And one more thing. I was reading the 16th book of Acts. Paul and Silas went to jail for preaching the gospel. We're not far from that. They already got us locked down in their house. And about midnight, they started praising and worshiping and singing God to God. You know, I wonder what they were singing about. Was they singing like TJ and Tess do? Victory in Jesus? Oh, or God is on the move? We don't know. But God, but I know they were singing and they had a jailhouse rock. Because God started clapping his hands. God started stamping his feet. And there was an earthquake. And prison doors were open. Captivities were set free. And the Roman guard jailer, him and his whole family was saved. So, see, when we get in lockdown, 
we have to get to the point where we depend everything on God and then praising and worshiping and then our worlds will shake and prison doors will be open our families will be saved our loved ones will be saved so family Naz in these dark moments let your light shine let it shine to the shut ins let it shine to your family your friends your neighbors and God will shake the earth and open doors and our family will believe as we start to read the scripture I'm first Timothy most of you might not know me. I go to the first service. And this is my bride. And I'm Sue Graham, and I work with the children in Kids Church. So let's get into the reading of the scriptures. It's Matthew 26, chapter 57 to 68. And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to, Ca to Caiaphas, the high priest where the priests and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council saw false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But... At last, two false witnesses came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, I adjure you, by the living God that you tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, It is as you said, nevertheless I say to you, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on heaven the clouds of. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look now, you have heard this blasphemy. What do you think, they said? He is deserving of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him, and others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? Heavenly Father, as we get into the word and study it, May this word get into us, Lord, that living word in us, so out of us will flow rivers of living water. We ask that this word will be seed for the sower and bread for the hungry, so we can share the light of the good news with those around us. We give you the glory and praise. Amen. You know, as I was reading this here, I see the people he had trouble with right off the bat was religious people. I think more pastors have trouble babysitting us church sheep than to do the outside world. Keeping us from bickering, fighting back and forth, keeping us in line, agreeing with everything. So it, it's amazing that he had more problems with the religious system. And these people, they were just kind of a mob. These weren't Roman soldiers. The Jews had no power of calling in the Roman soldiers. These were guards and servants for the temple. And they were around this temple to protect it and, and watch what was going on. And they formed an illegal mob and they took Jesus to the high priest. But, you know, I got thinking about last week's lesson when Peter cut off this one of the servants' ears. And Jesus says, not by might, not by power, but my spirit. I can call 10,000 leagues of angels down to save me. So he picked the ear back up and put it back on the servant. There was no evidence. There was no penalty. There was no sin. Isn't that just what Jesus does to us? No evidence. He covered up our sins. No penalty for sin. What an amazing Savior we had. Not only is he the offerer, he is offering Eve. And I, I was thinking when they left the upper room, 
They, they, they still do it today at Passover. They sing hallelujah hymns. You'll find those at the 18th chapter of Psalms. And one of them is, this is a day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. How can King of Kings, Lord of Lords, sing a song like that when he's going to be spit on, mocked, slapped, and crucified because he was a man with a plan. He had an idea <laughs> that he was going to follow this through. Not, he says, not my will, but your will. Oh, what a testimony of our Savior. <laughs> this wasn't the first time he, he was brought before Clypas. He, in John 11.50, after he raised Lazarus from the dead, the same mob brought accusations to Clypas. What are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> Not only is he a water walker, he's also a death raiser. I mean, he, we can't even let him go to funerals. He messed them up. And Clypas didn't know it. But he prophesied. He prophesied over Jesus. And, and it was a few weeks down the road it had come true. John eleven fifty. Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. He knew just like we knew, one offering, one priest, one at a time, that one man had to, he didn't realize what he was, he was doing, but he prophesied over the death of Jesus. And, and that prophet's come through a few weeks down the road. And when he brought him up there, Verse 58 says, Peter followed him at a distance to the high priestess. Oh, not going on a rabbit trail there. How many of us are like that? Are we a fan or are we a follower? Peter was saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. His name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, but he followed Jesus in a time of need at a distance. And the chief priest took false counsel getting him. They needed a witness. All the people there, they had finally come up with two witnesses. Because, see, he has to fulfill the law of Moses. At first, he didn't speak. He wouldn't say a word. But Deuteronomy 19.15 tells us the law of Moses is you need two, two witnesses. One witness shall not raise against a man concerning any iniquity or sin that he commits by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. So, see, they didn't want to break the law. They tried to go by the law. And Jesus was divided by the law. He wouldn't answer. Because he had to fulfill prophecy to a T. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a true prophet. And there would be sin in his life. Isaiah 53 tells us about why he didn't answer. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so opened not his mouth. Prophecy fulfilled right in front of Caiaphas, the high priest, and he, he couldn't get it. He didn't realize that the Herald's temple and the priesthood and the Sanhedrin were so corrupted they had, that the the temple didn't have the Ark of the Covenant, a lot of commentaries say, in it. They just went through a ritual. And Caiaphas didn't realize that the Ark of the Covenant was, was walking right in front of him. The light of menorah was shining on him. The bread of life was right there beside him, and he didn't realize it. But see, this high priest didn't know the word. He's out putting him under oath. Because see, once you put him under oath, under the word, that's where we get our swearing in on the Bible and the corpse. Do you say, do you take an oath under God to tell the whole truth? Then you're required to tell the truth. And that was part of Moses' law. See, God's not a lawbreaker. He's a way maker. And he, he had to answer. And when he answered, he told him, uh,
Jesus said to him, It is you, as I said, nevertheless to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand and power of coming up in heaven on the clouds. He was telling him he's going to have the same vision, vision Stephen seen. Jesus seen the, Jesus on the right hand of God. Same vision John seen. See him on the, on the right hand of God coming in clouds of glory. And as we look up, get in our prayer closet, when we're locked down, we'll see Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, ready to come back for his church. And then we get into a little teaching here. It gets kind of confusing. Then the high priest tore his clothes. Now, here's our, here's our high priest. This is what the high priest looked like. His everyday wear. He wore this in the temple at the sacrifices. He had the breastplate, the bells, the censer to carry the anointing oil in, his everyday clothes. Underneath here is a white collar, a one-piece robe. And he wore that when he went on the Day of Atonement, a white robe with a one-piece collar. And that collar is uh, not to be ripped. It was made, it was, it was, she's got the scripture right here. Yeah, yeah. Leviticus 27.10 And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is considered to put on the garments, shall not uncover his head, nor rend his clothes. Don't rip that collar. He says that high priest never rips that collar. See, the ripping of the clothes and the ashes is a sign of mourning for death. Nobody died yet. And then Ezekiel twenty-eight thirty-two tell, Moses tells about how that robe was made. And there shall be a hole at the top of it, in the midst thereof, and shall have a binding of woven work around about the hole of the uh, Hebron that is not rent. It cannot be ripped. There is a reason for that. Because when a priest found out he had sinned in his life, he was unworthy. He would rip that. And that meant he was stepping down from the priesthood. I'm unworthy to be a high priest. And he did this just days before he had to go into the atonement. He ripped that. He realized then that there's a new priest in town. And the law and the prophecy started to come together for Caiaphas. And he could see that he wasn't the high priest and that Jesus was that lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So that's why he tore his clothes. Just as Jesus, one piece robe, they could have ripped it up and divided it up. But no, he's the final high priest. That robe was not ripped. That robe was gambled away and auctioned off. Just like the bell in the temple. That comes from the top to the bottom. That's a picture of God coming from the down from heaven to save man. And then we had access into the Holy of Holies. We had access through Jesus back into the temple. There's a new temple. There's a new priest living with inside us. And that's what's so exciting about it. Because as we finish up the scriptures... It says they spit in his face, and they beat him, and others mocked him, and hit him with the palms of their hands. A few days ago, they were raising palms to him, and now they're hitting him with the palms of their hands. What a change. Do we ever do that? Are we lukewarm or hot? Are we cold and indifferent? Might not spit in his face, might not beat at him, but we do we let our light so shine? Every day for Jesus. Do we stand up for what's right. And what's wrong. Do we let our light so shine. That the world can see it. That We're going through a dark period right now. And that's when our light should shine the most. Because see. The world. Can lock us. Lock us up. And it has. But it can't shut us up. That's what Daniel says. He says, I'm going to pray to my God three times a day and duct tape ain't going to keep me quiet. Man, I guess I run out of time. It's amazing when you 
get into the scriptures how fast time will go. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we lift up Autumn. We lift up Pastor Gary. We lift up Pastor Suzanne and any other ones involved in this ministry of outreach. Lord, they're used to being hands-on, but now we're depending on you having your hands into this to guide and to direct this gospel to go. Thank you, God, for you always will be the power and the glory forever and ever. And amen. Thank you, family, and as for your time. And tell my kids that I really miss them, and I can't wait to get back into kids' church. Amen. Bye.